Hi everyone, I'm Chris and welcome back to this machine learning course. This section gives an introduction to support vector machines. First, let's take a look on the content of the full lecture on support vector machines. In this section, we start first by taking a look on the idea behind support vector machines to perform classification tasks. Then, the mathematical model for a support vector machine is introduced. After that, in the next section, we will derive a cost function which is needed to train the model. We will derive an equivalent formulation of the cost function and the corresponding optimization problem. This leads to the dual formulation. It is used to calculate highly nonlinear classification problems very efficient. Thereby, the so called kernel trick is used. Another possibility to generalize the support vector machine to account for nonlinearities is a soft margin. Finally, we learn how to apply the support vector machine to regression tasks. So let's start by looking at the idea of support vector machines. Consider a typical classification problem with two different classes. Class A, the light blue dots, and class B, the dark blue dots. The idea is to separate these groups geometrically by a linear boundary. On the right side, an example is sketched with three input variables x1, x2 and x3. The separating plane is shown in green. It is determined by the training data in a process of fitting the support vector machine model to the data. Then the boundary can be used to classify new data points with unknown classes. In our example, on the left side of the boundary, any data point is classified as class A and on the right side as class B. Now, this idea is a bit different compared to logistic regression. On the left side, logistic regression is illustrated. An S-shaped curve, the so-called logistic function, is fitted to the training data. This curve is sketched in green. On the right side, the support vector machine is illustrated. For the support vector machine, a boundary needs to be found which separates the two classes geometrically. This boundary is a one-dimensional point in our example, marked by a green diamond. On the left side of the boundary, any data point is classified as class A and on the right side as class B. Note that this geometric approach might be the most natural and intuitive way for us humans to visually separate two classes. The separating space around the boundary is marked by grey bar. It is called margin and the boundary is in the middle of the margin. Although this approach is very intuitive, it has a major disadvantage. We can use it only if the two classes can be separated geometrically. In the example on the left, you can see a light blue data point on the right of the x-axis. This is no problem for logistic regression but it is for a support vector machine, at least without further modifications. We will come back to this point later. A major advantage of a support vector machine is that it allows for efficient calculation because of its simple approach. Last but not least, it should be mentioned that by using some kind of linearization, the logistic regression model can be transformed into the support vector machine model. However, if you just want to decide which model is the best for your specific problem, consider both, fit them to data and decide which you want by using cross-validation.
Let's take a look on the idea of the support vector machine in more detail. On the right side, we consider a two-dimensional example with the two classes A and B, represented by the blue dots. In the previous lecture of logistic regression, the classes A and B were encoded by a target variable Y. For Y equals 0, we had class A, and for y equals plus 1, we had class B. In this lecture, we use a different encoding to simplify the notations of the model later. We choose y equals minus 1 for class A and y equals plus 1 for class B, as it's stated on the lower right side. However, you can apply a variable transformation to change this encoding if you want. The two classes are separated by a linear boundary, which is geometrically a so-called hyperplane. For our initial example with three independent variables, x1, x2 and x3, this was a plane. For this example on the right, we have two independent variables x1 and x2. So the separating hyperplane is a straight line. For a single independent variable x, it is a separating point on the x-axis as seen before. The area around this hyperplane without any data points is called margin. In our illustration, the margin is a green area within the dashed lines. The separating boundary cuts the margin into two halves. The data points which limit the margin's area width are called support vectors. Consequently, they are on the margin's boundary. The separating boundary within the margin can be used to classify new data points with unknown classes. The separating boundary is determined by the data. There might be more than one possible separating boundary. On the right side, our original example is sketched again. On the left side, a different separating boundary was selected. This choice leads to a much smaller margin width. It seems very likely that further data points can be more easily on the wrong side of the separating boundary. Even small variations of the data close to the margin give misclassified data. This is different on the right side. Small variations lead to data points within the margin, but less likely on the wrong side of the separating boundary. So the clearest separation is for maximal width d of the margin. In the next section, we will derive a cost function which can be used for maximizing the margin's width. We need an equation for the separating hyperplane to give a more mathematical formulation of the support vector machine. A general equation for such a boundary which depends linearly on the independent input variables x is 0 equals the vector w transpose times the vector x plus b. The vector of the input variables, vector x, has the independent variables x1, x2 and so on up to x capital K as components. The vector w has linear scaling parameters w1, w2 and so on up to w capital K, which correspond to the independent variables. The parameter b is the added intercept of this linear relation. So this equation takes capital K independent variables into account. These variables are combined linearly 
by the W parameters and the added intercept B. Geometrically, this is a hyperplane in capital K dimensional space. To understand this a bit better, let's take a look on another example. But now, with explicitly plotting our target variable on the y-axis. So the light blue data points are at minus 1 with respect to the y-axis. The dark blue dots are at plus 1. The separating boundary has the equation 0 equals the vector w transpose times the vector x plus b. This equation relates our input variables x1 and x2 linearly. Geometrically, this is a straight line. Now, consider the right side of this equation as a function y tilde. So consider the linear function y tilde equals the vector w transpose times the vector x plus b. So y tilde depends linearly on x1 and x2, which describes geometrically a plane. For y tilde equals 0, this is our separating boundary. We call y tilde a pseudo model for the support vector machine. For y tilde equals plus 1, the plane crosses the dark blue data points, which are the closest to the boundary. Thus, we choose the margin boundary on the right side, closer to class B, to be plus 1 equals the vector W transpose times the vector X plus B. This margin boundary is called plus margin boundary. Similarly, we can define a minus margin boundary. For y tilde equals minus 1, the plane crosses the light blue data points which are the closest to the boundary. Thus, the minus margin boundary on the left side is minus 1 equals the vector w transpose times the vector x plus b. With respect to our pseudo-model function y tilde, classifying new data points with respect to the input variable values is straightforward. For input values, which give negative values of the pseudo-model function, we can choose class A, or y equals minus 1. For positive values of y tilde, we choose class B, or y equals plus 1. So, here again summarized we have the equations for the separating boundary in blue. Below we have the two equations for the margin boundaries parallel to the separating boundary. The margin boundaries enclose the margin and the separating boundary is in the middle of the margin. In the next section, we will take a look on how to determine the parameters of the model W and B. Section finished. Thank you very much for listening. If you like this video, please click the like button and consider to subscribe this channel. If you have any questions or comments, please leave a comment down below. So thanks again and see you in the next section.